This one's not bad. Not too sure about this one. Not too sure about that one. Pyramids is pretty good. Okay. Um, what's up? Yeah, this this is this is really getting out of hand. <laughs> anyway, it's Monday. Yes, I moved from Saturdays to Monday. It just works a lot better with my work schedule here. So it's Monday. Time for another episode of the Breakfast Club. And today I got a somewhat more lighthearted topic, at least I hope, for today's video. And it's on, well, I, I hesitate to say gatekeeping, but it's sort of like that. It's more about what I think is kind of like what I see as a constant killing of free form or like independent art. You might be wondering what the hell am I talking about. Oh, okay. Let me start by showing you guys something. Ugh. See this? This is a... This is an independent film called Yeah, Sure, Okay. And it's actually one of my favorite movies. It's rather unique in how it's presented. And it's a charming, amusing martial arts tale. It's basically the story about two people and them chasing after this dream girl and each of them having their own reasons for doing so. One of them is just getting over a bad breakup and the other one is just somebody who's constantly, you know, down on his luck with love and is trying to change his, his luck. And it's, I mean, even though it's a love story, it's well, sort of a love story. It's also, you know, a comedy and it's a martial arts flick. Uh, as you could probably tell, sort of tell by the cover, like, you know, the way they're all in their action poses and stuff like that. And it's done by a stunt team. It's done by um, a group called Zero Gravity. Some of you guys may know who they are. Um, they've done a lot of, they got a lot of little videos and clips on the internet. You can find them on YouTube and, you know, their spots. But generally, you can find their stuff on YouTube. Um... And it's the, the the most unique thing about this movie, besides the fact that you know it's, it's an independent film and it's got martial arts in it and it's it's done pretty well, very well actually, is that it's a silent film. There is no spoken dialogue whatsoever. It's all done through action. It's done through you know facial expressions, um, you know physical acting, things like that. But it's done pretty well. Um, I found it. It's it's one of my favorite movies actually. Um, you know, I, I would put this on par with some of the more modern product, you know, like more bigger budget productions that I've seen because of how charming the story is and how well done the film is. And even the art direction behind it, the storytelling behind it, how, you know, the characters are portrayed, you know, how color is used to portray each character, how, you know, you can easily get a sense of what their personalities are just from their physical acting. It's, it's done really well. And the action's done really well, too, because, again, this is a stunt team, and if you know anything about Zero Gravity, you know how good these guys are. They've actually done stunt work for, you know, more professional films and certain TV shows as well. And every now and then they come together to do their own stuff, and this was the result. Um, but this is not a video reviewing this movie. Rather, it's talking about I'm bringing this up to kind of lead into something that I kind of miss from the internet and from YouTube and, you know, other aspects of, you know, the net and, and you know, entertainment in general. And it's this move from this sort of, like, free-form, independent art creation and more into trying to act like the big boys. Everything moving more toward the bigger production stuff, the quote-unquote professional stuff, the more standardized entertainment. And while I'm seeing, you know, changes here and there, like I'm seeing, you know, the bigger companies, in some cases, taking a little bit more risks or taking certain aspects of more independent stuff and incorporating that into their own, by and large, you know, bigger studios still tend to do certain things by the numbers, by the books. And that's bleeding into the more independent side of things and drowning out that sort of creativity. 
what I mean by that is, a good example I can give is like YouTube itself. I remember when YouTube was just starting out. Like I'm, I've been on YouTube for a very long time. You know, as a you know creator of content as well as you know a consumer of content. I remember back when YouTube was a very different beast from how it is now. Like the pre-Google days. You know, before Google took it over. And I remember the type of content that we would get. I mean, a lot of it. Most of it, of course, was unprofessional. It was just people just setting up their webcams and doing what I'm doing right now, just talking into the camera, talking about whatever the hell they wanted to talk about or showcasing whatever the hell they wanted to showcase. Of course, there was a lot of silly stuff. There was the cat videos, which are still kind of popular today, but it would get really blew up back then. Um, that's when it got started, you know, the, the cat videos, the pet videos, the goofy stuff, people acting silly on camera. Those were the days of Fred, and I'm pretty sure that many of you wish you, I hadn't brought that up. Many of you probably hope that you forget about Fred. <laughs> but, um, you know, this is where a lot of people got their start, you know, for better or for worse. You know, I'm mentioning names like, you know, the Amazing Atheists and all that. During that more, I, I guess, some people would consider it a more idyllic time. It depends on your point of view. But there were, I noticed the way people were making videos and the type of videos that people were putting out. While there were, you know, while there was some stuff that was definitely, you know, flying off the seat of their pants, you know, like just kind of like, just, you know, people just doing whatever came to mind, or just throwing things at the wall hoping it would stick, there was also a lot of creativity. You saw people coming up with videos where they were coming up with new forms of storytelling. You saw videos where people were coming up with new ways of expressing themselves or new ways of editing. You know, you saw film students putting out some of their first films or student films on YouTube do, being done in ways that you don't really see modern productions doing, pro, you know, more professional um, stuff doing. Um, you know, like you just saw, a, it was a whole lot of creativity and a lot of interesting YouTubers, we call them YouTubers now, back then it was just people putting stuff up. You know, just a lot of really cool creative stuff and you saw a lot of collaborations too. Certain storytelling projects that would kind of go viral. Um, like, you know, somebody would start a story and then they would like hit a bunch of other YouTubers and ask them to continue the story. Like you guys continue and then pass it on to the next person, pass it on to the next person. Coming up with their own creative ways to do that. I was kind of caught in something similar to that once where they, like we had to come up with, um, like there was this character that was just created and we had to come up with our own version, like talk about that character, what they did when they entered our lives. And it was just a collection of different videos bringing this out. Like it was just really, really interesting stuff. And you don't see that anymore. I, I, like, I barely see any stuff that reminds me of the old content, for better or for worse. But nowadays, if somebody is trying to get popular on YouTube, because that's the, the one thing, like before people were just putting stuff on YouTube just because it was fun. You know, I, I know there were people who saw the money being potential early on. The Amazing Atheist was one of those people I can think of who saw, was, they saw this as a money making thing right off the bat. Um, and it, like, but the, for the most part, people were just putting it up because they had a passion for it, or they just really enjoyed de having debates, or they just really enjoyed storytelling, or whatever the, the reason it was that they put that camera up. And nowadays, people are primarily they, they're hoping to get famous, or they're hoping to get an income, or they're hoping to get viral. And in order to do that, there's a certain way you need to put those videos out. So, you know, people now they got thumbnails, they got intros. That, you know, that there's certain music they license for their stuff. There's a certain way they're like, hi, here I am doing so and so and this. And isn't that like there's a certain snazzy way they want to like catch your attention? And it, it became this production. You know, like the way people do YouTube videos now, it's become this sort of production to be more quote unquote professional, which of course there are benefits to that. And there's obvious good results that come from that, at least with people who do it well. But it's it's lost that people have lost that kind of individuality that you used to see, that that creative spark that you used to see in older videos, older productions, when people would just do whatever. YouTube these days, for a lot of different reasons, the videos on there now are becoming more standardized. And this a kind of creativity that's lost with that. It, 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 
it's interesting to me that YouTube used to be a place where I would see a lot of really cool creative stuff and I would like jump on YouTube just to see what new wacky or really interesting things would pop up. But nowadays, it's now I go on YouTube, it's mostly just the standard stuff. Like I see more creative stuff being put up on Newgrounds than on YouTube. <laughs> You see a lot more like either thought provoking stuff or like, oh wow, that's interesting. And the more creative stuff is being stamped out for again for a variety of different reasons, some of which I'm sure you guys would want to debate or discuss. But that's gone. A good chunk of that creativity is gone. Like the only time you'll see people just not caring is if they don't care about being monetized. You know, they don't care if their ad revenue is not because they know their videos like it's not gonna get you monetized, it's not gonna be it's not going to, you know, get tons of views. I'm just putting it out for the hell of it, and hopefully somebody will see it. That, that, that sort of mentality is popping up less and less. I mean, you see less stuff like that being put out. And I see this all the time with different creative mediums, um, whether it be independent film, whether it be, you know, videos on YouTube, whether it be certain books, articles. The more things start to get more, you know, standardized, the more you start having a process, a productive professional process. And especially when people are like, okay, I need to find a way to market this so that it can bring me an income or it can get more views or more customers or whatever, that creative spark just disappears. And I guess I'm just talking, oh, this is like a new way of packaging an old argument about how the more popular you get or the more you want to be popular, the more you kind of have to stifle your creativity. And I know there's arguments to the contrary for that, but I do, there is something to be said about how when people are putting out something and they want it to be popular enough so they can keep doing it, unless they really know how to keep that creative spark going so that they can stay unique and make it marketable at the same time, usually something, generally it's hard to keep that creative spark and be marketable at the same time. And that creative spark is usually the one thing that gets sacrificed. And you start seeing, like, when the Wild West days are over, when you now see a clear path to how to put something out, you get to see more people copying what's already successful. And it's kind of, in my opinion, a sad state of affairs. I understand why it happens that way. I understand the reasonings behind it. I'm not going to completely ignore the successes that can come from that. But I do miss that sort of creative spark. I do miss it, that, that I do miss seeing, you know, the, just the really interesting stuff that can come from people when they just don't give a fuck. <laughs> you know, when they just, I just feel like producing something or I just feel like telling this story this particular way or I feel like cutting this video this particular way and I'm just gonna put it out and whatever. And it, generally, they will find people who are willing to listen to that voice. They're, they're willing to accept that sort of content. I, I just wish there was more of it these days. I don't know. It, it, it could just simply be me, you know. I'm pretty sure you guys are like, probably like, the old days suck. No one knew what the hell they were doing. Stuff's a hell of a lot better now. The production's a lot slicker now. You know. And again, I don't think there's anything wrong with that opinion. This just happens to be my opinion. Anyway, hope that sparks some um, discussion with you guys, and I'll catch you guys later.